Hi, this is Karen Montgomery, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our Civil War Sampler Sew Along. Now, there's a few things that you're going to need in order to follow along with this project. The first thing you're going to need will be the Civil War Sampler book by Barbara Brackman. Now, all of your instructions for the blocks are inside this book. Now, this is actually the cover for the book. I've taken mine, and I've had the spline cut off of it, and then I had it drilled so that I can use it in a binder. If you would like to do the same type of thing, you can go to your local office supply store, and they can do this for you. Now, they will spiral bind it for you. Not all stores are able to drill it so that you can put it into a binder, but it's much easier to use your book when it will open flat. I wanted mine drilled so that I could put mine into a binder and put page protectors in there, as you'll see in a few minutes, so that I can save my blocks. I'm doing that because I need to work ahead of you so that we can keep up with this program. Now, before we go into the book, the things that you're going to need are obviously your fabrics. This is intended to be a scrap project, so there's really no fabric requirements at all in the book. My suggestion is you pick a style of fabrics, and as you're going to see, the blocks that I've started to work on are all in a Kim Deal type fabric. I started with a fat quarter bundle. I suggest 12 fat quarters to start, and then you can add to it as you go along. If you're working with a style of fabric, like batiks, or something contemporary, or something like a Kim Deal, then you can always get more to add into it later. This is going to be a year-long project, and you might need some in the 10th, 11th, or 12th months to help round things out. So pick a style of fabric that will allow you to do that. You're going to need your basic cutting supplies, your rotary cutter, your mat, and your ruler. Um, I use a Creative Grids rule, uh, rulers and Creative Grids cutter because I'm a Creative Grids designer. I really do like this um, rotary cutter, and I really especially like the blades. So even if you use a different style of cutter, you might want to try the rotary blades that come from Creative Grids. I find they last much, much longer than just your standard rotary blade. You're going to need some thread, um, neutral colors, because we're going to be sewing lots of different colors and scraps together. So I've got some neutral color beiges, and I also have a darker shade, just in case I'm working on a particularly dark block. But something in the neutral tan shades should be fine. But whatever works for your fabric, that's the color thread that you're going to need. Now you're also going to need um, some rulers, and there might be a specialty ruler or two that you're going to be looking for. The first thing that you're going to need is just your regular long ruler to be able to cut the long strips that you'll need. There's also a lot of 1 8 inch cuts in this book. If you decide you're going to follow along with this book exactly the way that it's written, you're going to be cutting some 3 8 5 8 and 7 8 inch increments. This is an itty bitty eights ruler from Creative Grids. They come in different sizes and this would be the largest one that you would need. The smaller square piece or the smaller rectangular piece will work just as well for the pieces we're going to cut. Now um, there's a lot of lines on this ruler so one of the things I suggest is that you also invest in some glow line tape. It's a fluorescent color tape that allows you to mark off the areas on your ruler that you particularly want to use. It comes in assorted colors of the package. It's from Omni and um, this is the fluorescent pink so this would show up on most of the pieces that I'm going to be cutting, my fabric colors. Also comes in an orange and a yellow in the same package. Um, it's a uh, sticky tape, but it's not so sticky that it leaves residue on the back of your ruler. So you can just mark the line to make sure that you're always cutting on the line that you intended to use. So some glow line tape will help. There's some other things that you might want to have. I'm going to be cutting my half square triangles using my quick trim and circle ruler. You can use whatever your favorite ruler is to do that. So if you have to cut half square triangles, you might already own the 4590. That will work for you just as well. And 
I also like to have a square up ruler. Something like this. This is the eight and a half inch square up ruler. So it's eight and a half by eight and a half. This size or anything larger than that if you're making the eight inch blocks. Of course, if you're making the 12 inch blocks, you'll want the larger ruler. But if you have a 12 and a half inch right now, you can certainly use it on the eight and a half inch size blocks. The other thing that I find extremely helpful because we're working on eight and a half inch blocks is the size I've chosen. So I will be doing a lot of two and a half inch squares. So in order to cut those, I use what's called shop rulers. This one's from Calico Cats, um, who's in Lake Jackson, Texas. And this is Marie's Sewing Center, who's in New York. Marie has two stores. I use these in companion with each other, and you've probably seen me demo it, where you can take your strip of fabric and cut one, but the other ruler up against it, and then invert the rulers. So two shop rulers are very handy for cutting two and a half inch squares. And if that's the size you're going to use if you're doing eight inch finished blocks it, that are indicated in the book. Now let's talk a little bit about those finished size blocks. Many, many, many of the blocks in the quilt in, in this particular book are done in an eight inch size and they have four units across and four down. That makes it very easy to make it an eight inch block. Some of them, however, are three blocks across and three down, like an Ohio star would be. So it's kind of a nine patch block. That's when you get into the eighth of an inch measurements, because if you're going to divide those three units equally into an eight inch finished block, you're going to have some odd measurements. My decision is that the blocks that are should be or could be six inches, nine inches, or 12 inches easily, I'm going to do all of them in a six inch size and simply put a border around the outside edge to bring it up to eight inches. Now, I've written a list and I've assorted them and all of this will be available for you as a download. But I've already written a list and it's color coded and tells me what blocks should be done, which months, and how we're gonna lay them out. I've connected the blocks together so that when you work on them, you're kind of doing the same thing. If they're clipped corner blocks, then all of them will be clipped corners. Now I should probably explain, this is 50 different blocks, and it's 50 weeks if we do one each week. Now when I started doing my blocks, so that I would have them ready for your samples, I realized that doing them one at a time was a little more cumbersome than if I got all of my equipment out, all of my fabric out, everything that I needed to use, and I just made four or five of them at one time. So instead of doing one each week, I'm simply gonna give you everything you need for the entire month. So we're beginning in March of 2024, and there are five Sundays in that month. So on the first Sunday of the month, I'm going to give you five different blocks. You can work on them in any order. I will tell you what the numbers are for that month, and there'll be a little video that's uploaded that will tell you how I've made mine, any changes I might have made, and how I put those together. So we'll discuss each block in the little video, but you have to have the book in order to know what the blocks are. I'll give you the numbers that they are and you could just follow right along. So it won't be as difficult as you think. And we're gonna start with all eight inch blocks. We'll get all of those out of the way first. So a little about my book and my binder and how I've got myself organized for this project. This is the cover that was cut off of the book. Remember the spine was cut off of mine. And so I've had it hole punched so that it goes into a three ring binder. Every page from the book is in this binder in the order it was in in the book. So this is the front page inside the cover. Another little note about this. I noticed that someone had mentioned that they were trying to figure out which every one of these blocks are and where the placement is 
on these blocks in this particular quilt. Well, originally, this quilt was done on a blog post. Barbara Brackman posted these on her blog, and then it was so successful, they turned it into a book. So it wasn't actually written as a book. And there are some blocks that are in this particular quilt that are not in the book. There are also some in the book that are not in this quilt. So if you're trying to match them up exactly, it's not going to work. There's also some other sample quilts in the book, and some of those are not in here. Also, as you turn the page, you'll see that this is the information on the cover quilt. This is all that's going, all that the information you will get. There's no materials list, there's nothing like that. We'll handle all of that as we go along. But this tells you that she cut the sashing strips inch and a half by the length of the block, which in this case would be eight and a half inches, and how she put it together. But you notice these are 12 inch blocks on this side over here, and they're kind of completely different. They don't have the same sashing on them. They're put together in a different way. You'll see that this one is a straight set as opposed to an on point set. And the blocks that are in here are done in different ways in different colors. And there may even be some in here that are not actually in the book as well. There's some basic information about the blog that she wrote here. And then this is the only cutting instructions that you get in the book. Each pattern is going to tell you what size to cut them. But then if it says cut twice or cut once or subdivide, this is the, these are the pages that they ask you to refer to. So this is the size and the dimensions if you're using 8-inch finish blocks, and this is the page you would use for 12-inch finish blocks. Now, you'll see as we work through mine that I have some post notes stuck into my book to remind me to tell you about specific things. This is a page protector that I put in my binder and it's holding my block that's made up of block number one. So this is the illustration and you'll see that there's some scribblings and some writings and some stickers and lots of things in my book so that I can kind of keep track of what we're doing. Now when you look at the book there's a few different things. Let me open this up here and take my page out so we can compare from side to side. Notice that this pinwheel in the center and see the point, the direction it goes right there? Well, see the point goes direction right there, but notice up here it's different. It's backwards to this. Now it could be because they reversed the photograph, it could be just because the woman who made that one looked at it differently and read it in a different way. There are many, many, many what some of you might consider mistakes in this book. I think of them as a creative license. They really are not mistakes. It's just the way that the person making that block interpreted the design. And I encourage all of you to do the exact same thing. Interpret the design, use your color placement, make it look the way you would like it to look. Now, one other thing I'm going to point out. Do you see this stripe fabric that's right here? Now, it's illustrated over here as four, by four units, and that these are squares, and that's a half square triangle. But notice over here, it's there's a seam right there, and there's a seam right there. But then she got smart. Why cut that beautiful stripe apart if you're just gonna sew it back together again? So instead, she cut these as a solid piece and clipped the corner, which is what I chose to do in my block. So my block faces this direction, and this is the finished size of my eight inch block. So it's eight and a half inches right now. I used a stripe in the same position she used a stripe, but I didn't cut mine apart. Now, how do you know what size to cut that particular piece? I'm going to tell you, you have to learn to do your quilt math. If this is an eight inch block, that's two, four, six, eight. We cut our pieces with a quarter inch seam allowance on each side. So that means these are two and a half inch squares. Well, quilt math means 
This is finished at two because you always work on the finished size and then add seam allowance. So this is two and two makes that four inches long. The four inches then gets seam allowance added so it's four and a half inches. The height stays the same because it matches these squares so that's two and a half by four and a half and then you can just clip the corner. And to clip that corner You'll see in the video that I do for the blocks that all you do is take the square, put it on top. You can do the draw a line method or the pre-trim method and you'll clip those corners. Now you also in um, certain cases have a choice on how to assemble your blocks. Most of the eight by eight squares or even if they're 12 by 12, they're going to be put together in the same way. So you have these four units that are identical. The only difference in them is they're rotated. So you can take your four units and put them together sort of the same way you would a four patch. If you chose to split this, then you would have four here, four here, four here, and four here. So make it into four units and then put those units together. I learned that from Kay England. Rather than do it in a straight line and press all of your seams in one direction, Kay explained that when you see a quilt laying on the bed, you can generally tell which direction the seams are pressed because you're used to just rolling your seams back. I, on the other hand, press my seams open and then to one side, so I eliminate that little shadow of a hump. But it does make a difference and it helps your quilt look better from all directions if you put them together in four patches rather than straight rows. So my book has been separated out so that I have page protectors between each page so that I can slide my blocks into there. Now you could keep a separate, if you have had your spiral bound, you can keep a separate binder of all of your blocks if you would like. But the interesting thing is page protectors, make sure you get the ones that hold an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. If your blocks are eight and a half, they fit smoothly into this sleeve. If they're a little too big, you'll know right away they won't lay flat. If they're a little too small, you'll be able to see it along the edge. So eight and a half inch page protectors, the eight and a half by 11s will work beautifully to hold your blocks. So we're going to go through the book, but not necessarily in numerical order. I've grouped the blocks together by which ones we're going to use first and which ones would be the easiest and make the most sense to make in unison. So once again, each month you're going to get a little video that will be uploaded that will show you which blocks you need to make and which blocks you're going to be doing for that month and then how I put them together and I'll talk a little bit about each block. The order that you work in during the month doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter which day you do them on or which week it's good for. It's just that months that have five Sundays will have five blocks and months that have four Sundays will have four blocks. Now the videos will be uploaded on Sunday morning about 6 a.m. Eastern time. That way you'll have a chance to look at them, kind of maybe review the video. And if you have any questions, you can always ask on the nine patch a day group Sunday evening. Now my plan is to upload a link to a YouTube site where you'll be able to watch those videos. YouTube is free. It's not a problem to access it. I will provide a link right directly to the page, to that video, so you'll be able to go and see them from there. That way we won't clutter up the nine patch a day group and it'll be easy to find them. So this is my binder and the way that we're going to work. Now, what size quilt are you going to have and what is your quilt going to look like? In addition to the information that's in the book, what I've done is I've gone ahead and provided a handout that looks like this. This is actually the layout that's in the book. 
So it's the exact same number of 50 squares lined up exactly the same way with exactly the same sashing. 50 blocks in the 8 inch finish size will be 73 and a half by 89 without any borders. So that'll give you an idea. Now these will all be available on the nine patch a day page for you to download so that you can compare them. If you think 50 blocks seems like an awful lot and I don't know if I'm ever going to get 50 blocks made, then you might want to join us and do fewer blocks. So this is what I'm calling the medium sized layout. This has 32 blocks in it that are eight inches it will measure 58 by 73 and a half without borders. So it's a good lap size quilt just the way that it is, but it's not going to fit a bed. If you just want to taste, sort of just try this program or only make the blocks that you really like, then you might want to go with the small layout. The small layout is only 18 blocks. It's going to finish at 42 and a half by 58 without borders. So it could be a good size wall hanging or with borders, it's going to be a nice size lap quilt. And there are only 18 blocks. So you can pick your 18 favorite or you can just do one or two a month out of the ones that I assign. Now, I will give you the information and what you need to finish these. Remember, these are scrappy quilts, so there's no yardage information. Even your sashing pieces are intended to be scrappy. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind, the sizes that I'm giving you, especially because this is a diagonal set, so these are on point. When you turn a block on point, you get a funky measurement. So I've rounded them to the nearest half inch. They might be a little bit larger, or a little bit smaller, but that's the size. The sizes I've given you are pretty close to what they're actually going to be. So for the book set, you have a medium and a small option. Now, if you've decided that you're going to do the 12 inch size, if you want to do the 12 inch, blocks. This is the small set and it comes out 42 and a half by 58. If you do 12 inch blocks, it grows exponentially. Look, this is the exact same scale. This is the small layout. There are 18 blocks and it's 59 and a half by 80 without any borders. Notice also that there's an alternate corner here. In the book, this is the way that the designer finished the quilt. She did not put the nine patches on the corner and she put a light color triangle on this corner with no sashing strip. And the reason for that is it would, it would be an awkward size to go there, the way it would be cut off. But when you're working with the 12 inch blocks, you can go ahead and put that sashing strip on and add a corner. And when we get to this point, we'll talk about that and I'll go through it with you. So this is how much larger it will be if you get to the 12 inch. Now, if you decided you wanted to do the book size, you're looking at about 100 by 112, I think it works out to be. It's a very, very large quilt. Now there's a chance that you don't want to do diagonal set. So you can work this way. This is the exact same layout, and this is the one that I'm probably going to end up arranging my blocks as. This is a straight set as opposed to a diagonal set. So see how they're on a diagonal, and these are straight across? Same sashing unit, same cornerstones, same eight inch blocks. The blue ones in this case are eight inch blocks. These little pink squares represent the ones that I'm going to do in a six inch size and put a border around the outside edge. Now the colors here actually mean nothing. It's just the way that I differentiate them in the computer. But in this case, for this size, this is 61 by 80. It takes 35 total blocks. 23 of them will be the standard eight inch out of the book. But another 12 of them will be reduced down to a six inch size and have a one inch border put around the outside edge. And that's the ones that are represented by these 
pink squares. You'll need, in this particular case, 48 of the cornerstones and 82 sashing strips. Now, if you wanted a larger quilt than that, you could add another row. So this is the same quilt with an additional row on each side, making it square. In this case, it's 80 by 80 without a border. Now, interestingly, queen size bed quilts are normally square. If you purchase one at the store, they're usually 84 to 88 inches square. So this, with a border, would be about queen size. It's going to take 49 total blocks. 33 of them will be 8 inch, and another 16 of them will be the 6 inch reduced size blocks with the border around the outside edge. You're going to need 63 of the cornerstones and 112 sashing strips for that particular size quilt. All of these options will be available as a PDF download on the Nine Patch a Day site. So you can choose which one you would like and then print that one out, or you can print them all out and make your decision later. Meanwhile, I'm going to tuck these inside my binder so that everything is all in one place and then I'm going to get busy working on my blocks so that I can film a video for you for the first of March.